Most businesses need accounting software to understand their numbers and keep up to date with their tax obligations. In this video, we go through setting up your file through Xero. Hi guys, today we'll be going through on how to set up a Xero file. So once you've clicked sign up and you log into Xero, this is the page that you would be shown. So just click next. Here they request the organization settings. So this is the company name. This is the legal trading name. And it may not be a company, it may be a sole trader, it may be a partnership, or it may be a trust. Click on the relevant structure. For me, I would click company. Put in your ABN number. I'm just going to use the ABN of Box Advisory Services, which is the uh, company that we are working at. So here, the branch number depends on your activity statement. So if you log into your Australian Business Services online account and click on activity statement, you'll be able to see either 001 or 002 on whatever it says there put in the number so i'm just going to put here 002 put in the address for your business i'm going to go one two three hunt street obviously this is a random address that i'm picking up click copy postal if it's the same uh, address if it's not the same address then change the address click next all right so this is the activity statement settings so this activity statement stands for, uh, is basically your best, your business activity statement. So the GST accounting method, you can choose whether it's accrual basis or cash basis, or if you are not registered for GST, then click none. But if you're registered for GST, generally it will be a cash basis if you're a new business. Sometimes it could be a accrual basis if you're not sure. Once again, number one, you can check your online services for business account, or number two, you can speak to your accountant. So click uh, for me, I'll click on cash basis, enter your company tax file number, or if you're a sole trader, your sole trader tax file number, if you're a partnership, your partnership tax file number, etc. GST calculation here, you can either choose quarterly or monthly. So generally I'll leave it as quarterly. Your PAYG withheld. So PAYG is a prepayment of taxes. So PAYG withheld is a prepayment of taxes for your employees and PAYG income tax which is also called PAYG installments, is a prepayment of taxes for the company or business itself. So if you pay PAYG for your employees or if you hire employees, definitely you have to either choose quarterly or monthly. So once again, if you're not sure whether it's quarterly or monthly, check your business services online or speak to your accountant. Generally for a smaller business, PAYG with help will be done on a quarterly basis. PAYG income tax, only occurs when your business has had a profit for more than a year, or if you voluntarily opt for PAYG, uh, a prepayment of taxes for your business. So if you do have PAYG income tax or PAYG installments, you have to click either pay installments quarterly, that's on a quarterly basis or income times rate. So income times rate means your previous financial year's profits multiplied by a rate. Okay, so I'm just gonna click leave it as none because in this case, demo company one is a new business. Here you have the different tax defaults for your invoices. You can either leave it as uh, tax inclusive or tax exclusive. Generally sales invoices would have a tax exclusive amount. Same thing for purchases. You can either include it as tax inclusive or tax exclusive. I will leave it as the default, which was tax inclusive. So here it asks you whether or not your organization sends invoices. If it does, click yes. If it doesn't, click no. I'm just going to show you how to set up an invoice. So click on default settings here. Invoices will be due how many days off after the invoice date. Generally, it'll be 14 days. Could be seven days. Once again, it depends on your business. I'm going to change the invoice number here to 0500 just so that people do not assume that you're a new business. And the quote expiry date, once again, you can change it. I'm just going to put it 30 days after the quote date. You only need to put in the quote expiry date uh, if your business sends quotes, because not all businesses will send quotes. Click save. You can upload your logo here if you have a logo. Click options, click edit. Here, this is very important. You need to update your terms and payment advice so that people know how to pay you. So say, please make payment within whether it's 14 or seven business days. Okay. 
then you can say you would say what account it is. So mo one PTY LTD account number and also the VSP. Okay, one two three four five six account number one two three four five six seven eight. Okay, here you can put the terms for your quotes. So please note that quote will expire within 30 uh, days. Save. And once you are happy with your invoice, you can click next. All right, so this is where you will invite your accountant. So it'll ask you whether or not uh, you want to invite users, click yes. So put in your accountant's name and email, and then put in, uh, usually an accountant will require payroll admin so that they can uh, manage your payroll. The accountant generally would require business and accounting and click advisor, take all three of them. So the first one, business account admin, means they can edit the bank account or create a bank account within your zero file. It doesn't mean that they can transact or move money within your bank account. So the only thing this does is enable your accountant to connect your bank account to zero. The second one is uh, submitting a best. If your accountant submits your best for you, take this and manage users. Generally accountants will require this so that they can add different accountants from different divisions into your file as needed. Click send invite. Okay, obviously this is dummy. So I would not send an invite. I'll just go ahead and click cancel. Okay, and then click next, All right? So it asks you whether you have any foreign currencies used by the organization. Generally, you will not have it, but if you do hold money, anything other than Australian dollars, US dollars, uh, Romimpi, anything like that, you would click add currency. But for a lot of businesses that transact in different uh, currencies, they also have uh, they also change the currency back into Australian dollars. And when they change the currency back into Australian dollars, it still hits the Australian bank account. And in that case, you do not need to add currencies because everything would go through your Australian bank account anyway. Okay, so it will ask you whether you like to set up your child of accounts. Use the default child of accounts provided by Zero. Click Next. I like to call a child of accounts similar to like a bookshelf. So you have your book. Let's say it's a sci-fi book. You want to put it into the sci-fi bookshelf. The book is basically a transaction, a bank transaction, and the bookshelf is your chart of accounts. So you can see within the chart of accounts, it's firstly sorted by the type. All the revenue accounts are together and all the expense accounts are together. The second way of sorting is by alphabetical order. So now that you know all the expense accounts are together, you can see that it's sorted by A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then you can see there are codes here. The only significance of the code is to put it into the right order. So if I say uh, 486, this is where the new account would slot in. And I'll show you an example. And you can also see that the uh, codes are defined by the type also. So anything that starts with two is a revenue account. Anything that starts with four, it's an expense account, etc. So I know for, for certain, just because I've done this so many times, uh, that staff amenities and meals are not included in the chart of accounts. So I'll go ahead and click add account, account type expense. I'll go ahead and go 486 and call it staff, amenities, and meals. Make sure that the GST type is correct, whether or not it's best excluded, GST free expenses or GST on expenses. If you are GST registered, uh, staff amenities and meals generally would be a default at GST on expenses. But if you are not GST registered, you would leave it as best excluded. Click save. You can see the staff amenities and meals account is created here at 486. One other account that I would change is the 880 owner A drawings account. So I will change it to direct alone. And it's just because it makes it more intuitive. Okay. Once you've done that, um, you also want to create one more account, which is uh, the code 821. And it's a current liability. And this one would be called a tax clearing account. Description is for any best. 
JYG withholding, JYG installment, and income tax. So whenever you pay anything tax related, you want to code it to the tax clearing account. Click save. Now that that's done, you can click next. It asks you whether or not uh, bank accounts need to be added. You say, yes, you want to add bank accounts. So go ahead and click add bank account here. You will get to choose different bank accounts and you will just choose whatever account is relevant to you. I'm going to go ahead and click CBA and it'll ask you to log in and connect accounts. If you're using a CBA account, click login and connect accounts and that will enable your bank feed. So what a bank feed is, is essentially any future transactions would flow through your zero account automatically. And then um, not all bank accounts would have this. So if you are using anything other than CBA, sometimes they require you to submit a form, etc. Because this is a dummy account, I'm just going to go ahead and click skip. You put in your account name, business transaction account. Account code, it's optional, so you can just leave it. Account type will be every day, day to day. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. All right. Click continue. Now I click next. And here, this is the conversion date. So the conversion date is when, number one, uh, you want to convert, let's say, a QuickBooks file, an MYOB file, basically any other accounting software into a zero file. And the conversion date is when you convert it. And you have to bring the balances from the other file to this file. Usually a conversion date would be the end of financial year or the other uh, conversion date could be when the company has started. So um, for this case, I'm just going to go July, 2021. Here the conversion balances is based on your previous year's annual accounts or your balance sheet. And you have to in input the opening balances here. So if you're not sure, speak to your accountant because this is quite technical. So click next and you'll say setup complete. So thank you for um, staying here and going through this guide with me. In the next guide, we would go through how to import a bank statement as bank feeds are only showing future transactions. They do not show historical transactions. So in the next video, I'll teach you how to import previous trans transactions into your zero account. Thank you very much.